Hi everybody, I am Jody Bach. And if you want to test the limits of your comfort zone, say yes to Kurt McSparren when he has you speak on something called Leadership Unfiltered, and then call your talk, I am a hypocrite. <laughs> so I am a hypocrite. And for the purposes of the talk today, I want to change that just a little bit from I am a hypocrite to I have been a hypocrite. Because everything in my life, all the choices I've made, all the decisions I've made up to now have brought me right here. But if I draw a line in the sand right here, right now, I have the opportunity to take a look backward because as Steve Jobs tells us, that's where you can connect the dots, only in looking backward. And when you can look backward to get some perspective, you have an opportunity to change what you're doing going forward. So today, I am just here to tell you a story. And the story is my story. I'm not here to give you anything you need to take. I actually will tell you that if there's nothing, no action plan you get from what I say, that's perfectly fine. Because I do this for a living. And every time I speak and train and coach and consult and share all my wisdom and everything I've learned over all the years of studying and doing what I've done, I can tell you all the best things in the world. I am the smartest person in the world in my head. But that doesn't mean I always take my own advice. I have been a hypocrite. I know better and I don't always do better. Now I'm seeing some, thank you, I'm seeing some nods. That's very helpful for me when I see nods because it means I'm not in this alone. I'm listening to a book right now um, Seth Godin's new book, the marketing one, This Is Marketing, and there's a new term that I've never heard before called sonder. Has anybody ever heard that term, sonder? It means that there are other people in the world who are going through the same things you are. Oh, what a relief. What a relief. Because I've made tons of mistakes. I have been a hypocrite. And what I'm learning for me is everything I say in my head or out loud after the words I am creates my reality. And that's something I want to remember. In fact, I want to remember that so much that I tattooed it on my wrist. Because for me, that's the reminder. I need clues, I need cues, I need reminders. Because I have the tendency to be a perfectionist. I am a recovering perfectionist, I'll tell you that right now. Who is it? Chris Hemma. Tell Chris hi. Answer it and say hi from Jody. Will you? <laughs> so I have done things in the past that have taught me things, and I am not perfect. Oh my gosh, that's so hard for a recovering perfectionist to say. I had a bucket list item that I really wanted to accomplish, and it was to speak at a TEDx talk. And back in April of 2016, I got that opportunity. And I had this great talk, and it was awesome. Because I know that God has called me to write, and sometimes he pushes me to speak. So my speech was so good, I memorized it. And I knew exactly what to say. I knew to go here to this part of the audience for the first part, and then here for the second part, here for the third part, where I would pick up my prompt from the teleprompter and then go on with the speech. But when I went to the teleprompter over here, it wasn't there. Some of you were probably in that audience. <laughs> it was the worst experience of my whole life. And I'm going to show my age here. Remember Cindy Brady when she was on that quiz show and the red light came on and she went? That was me at my TED Talk, which is now, oh, I shouldn't have even said that, because now it's out there. You can go look at it. You can see it. You know, the funny thing about that talk, my topic was, what do you do when things just don't go the way you expect? <laughs> Pivot. And here I was talking at people, not with them. 
I had a message to deliver and it was fantastic and you should listen to me because I know everything because I've studied and I'm wonderful. And I did everything I could not to connect with that audience because I was so afraid of messing up. And there it was. And that was probably the best thing that's ever happened to me in my career. Most painful, but probably the best thing. Now, fast forward to, let me think when it was. Uh, no, September of this last year, 2018. I had a conversation with someone at Beans Coffee in West Fargo. Just a conversation. And I started talking about something with her who, that was important to me. We were just talking. And she said, Jody, you need to say that. That needs to be your speech on the Disrupt HR stage. And if you know about Disrupt HR, it's a, it's a, I think it's Ignite is the, the term they use for the five minute talks with 20 slides that automatically advance every 15 seconds. What? I couldn't even do a TED talk. How am I going to do this with 20 slides that advance every 15 seconds? Oh my gosh. And I, I applied and was accepted. And that talk in October of this last year has changed everything for me. While I have been a hypocrite, that talk was called Love or Fear. Five minutes, and for the, well, maybe not the first time, but one of the first times in my speaking career, I heard what I said. I heard what I said. And I learned that there are only two ways of looking at the world, through the lens of love or through the lens of fear. And all my life, without even realizing it, I had chosen fear. I was so afraid of messing up. I was afraid of what you'd think of me. I was so afraid all the time, and I just didn't know it. And when you choose the lens of fear, you get black and white, good and bad, right and wrong, up and down, in and out. And at best, you might get shades of gray, because that's what fear gives you a right and a wrong. If there's a winner, there must be a loser. But if you choose love, I chose love. Love is technicolor. And it gives you every shade of the rainbow in the way you see the world. It's not about getting rid of fear. It's about seeing fear for what it is and embracing it. And in October of 2018, when I gave that talk, I heard it. And now, whenever I feel that fear, that feeling of butterflies in my stomach or my shoulders get tight, I remember that I chose love. One of my bosses long ago in my career, when I was hired to do manufacturing training in leadership, where we got funding through how we could show results. I got hired to do leadership training to show results. How do you do that? How do you show results in manufacturing through leadership? My boss said to me one time, Jody, what you do is touchy-feely crap that makes me puke. Thank you. Because thank you. And I realized at that point, that was one of those turning points. What I do is touchy-feely crap. It might make you puke because you're going to say, holy cow, I've been choosing fear. And that's going to make me puke because that's not where I want to live. That's not where I want to live. You guys who have known me forever, this is different. I've been a great faker, but it's different. This is different. I chose love in October of 2018, and it's changing the entire way I see the world. So if there's any action item for you at all today, it's to think for yourself. Have I chosen fear, or could I choose love? And I'm telling you, it's going to make all the difference. G.K. Chesterton one time was asked to write an essay. And the essay was a, in answer to the question, what's wrong with the world? And he wrote a two-word essay, I am. May we all change the question a little bit. Not to what's wrong with the world, but what's right with the world. And may we all have the same answer, I am.